One year ago, we bought an O'Day 28 sailboat. And in this video, let's see how much it costs to fix, own, and upgrade over the first year of ownership. From unexpected repairs to marina costs, I'm gonna show you everything that's been done and total it all up and tell you how much we've spent so far. We're Jason and Susie. In 2019, we bought Not Enough and learned how to sail her. After fixing up the boat, it was time for something bigger. While our new sailboat Envision has brought us new challenges, it also brings bigger adventures. We want to share those adventures with you. So join us as we have Adventures in Paradise. Hey Susie. What? You got some, some money I can borrow? It's not for the sailboat again, is it? Um, we bought a really nice example of a 28-foot sailboat because we didn't want to have a repeat of the Catalina 22 that we had where we fixed it up more than we sailed it. But wait, before we get started, if you want to see what I spent fixing up my Catalina 22, that video link will be at the end of this video and also in the description below. Many people have dreams of learning to sail and sailing out in the ocean not dreams of spending countless hours being a boat mechanic. And on our first boat, I spent more time fixing than I did sailing. So when it was time for a new boat, instead of buying something that needed a lot of work, I went looking for something that was ready to go and didn't need much in the way of repairs or upgrades. In fact, I wanted to find a boat where the owner kept a spreadsheet of all the maintenance he did. When we found Envision, she was not only beautiful inside and out, she had a long list of continual maintenance already done. Here's a spreadsheet the previous owner kept, and he sent me this via email before we bought the boat. And you can see back in uh, 2016 and 18, there's a couple things happening with the cooling system, the thermostat, exchanger, O-ring, recovery tank, and that, that's engine work. But then starting in 2020, you can see where the water pump was changed under the bathroom sink, that's the fresh water pump the prop chef zinc, bilge pump, Garmin chart plotter was bought on eBay, the cabin entry stairs were redone, um, the swim ladder steps, the prop chef zinc will keep coming up, the alternator was replaced, the fuel pump, the primary diesel filter, the secondary diesel filter, changed the starter motor, put a new voltage meter in, uh, I guess bought a new Genoa sheet, steaming light, cabin curtains, um, control panel switches. This is um, stuff for the control panel in the cockpit. A new air filter, hull lining. This looks really nice and it was redone. The main sheet traveler topped off the batteries. New glow plugs. New spinnaker sheet, which we've never used yet, but it, he bought one. Uh, sole varnish in the cabin. Changed the oil and the transmission fluid. Looks like he put some new battery grounds on and a fuse holder. Glow plug solenoid. This was actually an upgrade for a rapid start, so instead of waiting 30 seconds, you only have to wait 10 seconds. The propeller shaft sink comes in again and a spinnaker sock. Bottom paint. A new dodger. The toilet and the pump assembly. Swim ladder. Spinnaker halyard and then exterior wood and interior wood, resanded it, stained it, and then the zinc comes up again. So before we even bought the boat, in just one year, it was really improved and a lot was done to it. And so the total for everything that was already done before we even bought the boat was $4,948. Okay, so now let's go into when we buy the boat. And it gets into uh, January of 2021 and a new anchor line was $110. The anchor chain, 60 feet, $300 from West Marine. Um, got some throw cushions and line labels and just miscellaneous stuff for 20 bucks. So did the prop chef zinc again. Um, towels, gloves, you know, miscellaneous stuff for 40 bucks. Um, then I had to get a new anchor line, a better one for $100. Um, the other one got chafed while it was out on anchor for a month, so that was done. The oil and filter change about a hundred bucks because I had to buy a new evacuator pump also. Another zinc comes up again. A new bow roller for 14 bucks, which actually is the wrong size and it's still just sitting in a drawer. I did the new battery hold down straps and 
bought some miscellaneous things for that for 50 bucks. And the fuel tank, that was about a $500 job for a new tank, fuel lines, water lines, and a fill hose. And remember as I'm doing this that this boat was beautiful and you know really had a lot done to it already. So these are some of the things that just kind of can come up while you're owning a sailboat. A uh, new sea strainer, 20 bucks. A solar fan, $150. New port lights, about $250. I bought the new autopilot system for the boat for $12, almost $1,300. A solar panel and charge controller was a couple hundred more dollars. And um, changing all the LED lamps, I don't know, that was just really cheap, maybe 30 bucks. So the total that we spent on repairs and upgrades was $3,270. All right, so now that we're done with upgrades and repairs, let's talk about marina fees. Uh, this boat in our marina, where we are in Florida, costs about $340 a month, but with tax and whatnot, it's about $375 a month. And then to that, we have to add its monthly bottom cleanings, which is about $60 a month. So the total monthly cost just to keep it in the slip and have it cleaned is $435. And if we times that by 12 months, so we get a year, $5,220 a year just to have that sailboat sitting at its dock in the marina and keeping the bottom cleaned each month. All right, so I guess it's time for some grand totals. Now, I'm not going to count the $4,948 that the previous owner spent because that's his money and that's how I got the boat. But we spent $3,270 on our own upgrades and repairs. We spent another $5,220 on the marina fees. So our total for upgrades and repairs, along with the marina costs, are $8,490. And remember, this is just our first year of ownership. I expect our upgrade and repair bill to come way down after this first year, now that the autopilot, fuel tank, anchor chain, and solar setup is all done. Oh, well, there's not much we can do about the $5,220 bill from the marina each year. That's just a given. But there are ongoing costs that keep adding up. Once new boat ownership starts, you get to know the boat really well. You have a to-do list and a want-to-do list. They all begin to grow. And, you know, for me in this boat, I've prioritized sailing over fixing it. So I could have sat in the marina and kept perfecting this boat. Most of us would certainly rather be out sailing than in the marina fixing our boat. Some things need to be redone constantly, like refinishing all the exterior wood every year or so, like the grab rails and steps on the swim ladder, having a diver cleaning the bottom each month, replacing lines and sheets, you know, don't call them ropes, and they can only sit out in the sun for a couple of years and they start to degrade. And if this upkeep isn't constantly done, the boat's value might decrease. It's gonna be less desirable for someone else to buy and less safe for you to use. So it really, you have to kind of combine that maintenance and those costs in. And what about some of the other items that we haven't replaced but that could unexpectedly go wrong and might be costly? Here's some estimates. And remember that as boats get bigger, so do all the costs here. A new diesel engine could be ten to twenty thousand dollars. I mean, it could be a lot more than that, but just for your average little boat, new sails are around twelve hundred dollars each or more. A new furler for the jib, twelve hundred dollars. Winches could be a thousand dollars a piece, and this is all when you do some of the work yourself. Um, paying someone else to do this is very expensive, and likely the labor will really make these costs a lot more. So as you can see, owning a sailboat isn't like owning a car where you just get the oil changed once in a while. And it's a decent amount of work to keep it up and looking nice and working properly. And it's way more costly than an automobile. Not only that, but there's a safety aspect to it where you want to make sure you're safe out on the water and that nothing's going to break when you're out there sailing, especially if you're on long voyages. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the cost of sailboat ownership. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you join us on our next adventure.